Good morning. It is Coffee Chats with Can Coach Candy. We are in Mindset Monday or Monday Mindset. And uh, we're going to dig into some big things this week. Uh, we are going into week four now. That's crazy. Um, good morning, Myra. Great to see you. Uh, this is Monday Mindset. So we're going to get into some things that really, good morning, Martha, really open you up on a much larger level. And um, even some things that I just tapped into recently, I want to share with you. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Elaine. Love to see you ladies. So bright and early this morning. Uh, it is going to be an amazing, phenomenal week and uh, so honored uh, to be here to help you kick it off. Um, again, for those of you that might be joining us, I know we get some new people that join us um, from time to time. We really, uh, we meet every morning, 7.30 Central Time, here, same bat station, same bat channel, all of that good stuff. Um, and we get into different topics every day. And so Monday is all about resetting and really being intentional about how how you uh, set your mindset for the week. Tuesday is the training space. So we're going to get into some things that are going to be some strategies or concepts to help you level up your life. Wednesday is the wonder space, which is all about dancing and the possibilities and playing a huge, big imagine if. And then Thursday is our thankful throwdown space. This is a space to challenge ourselves to really walk in a deeper place of gratitude um, and extend that out so that we can open up so much more in our life. And then Friday is my Friday feature, which is an opportunity to share with you some of my favorite books, podcasts, and people. I will be interviewing some people here uh, coming up shortly uh, and have them play with us as well. So again, good morning, good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? How are you feeling on a bright and hopefully for you sunny? I'm in Austin, Texas. So the weather is um, absolutely going to be gorgeous again today. We have had uh, just amazing weather. I should say we had amazing weather yesterday. Saturday was a little goofy. We had some incredible thunderstorms and then huge gusting winds that made it almost impossible to do anything. So yesterday was fantastic. Um, I think my puppy is a little tired. I took him out on two long walks because uh, I just could not get enough of the absolutely perfect. Today I want to talk to you about a concept um, that's really going to help you reset your mindset. Um, and I will tell you that I've done a lot of work, uh, a lot of Joe Vitale's work. Um, and right now I'm, uh, of, of course, engrossed in several books. Um, and one that is really speaking to me, and I'm going to talk more about this later on, Oh, it's so interesting to me because I remember when I didn't think good walks yesterday, yes, and this morning. Excellent. I love that. I love hearing that you're getting out and connecting to nature and feeling that, you know, getting that deep breath that we need to take um, throughout our day. And so hopefully you're still, you know, investing in your bookends that you are being very intentional about how you are showing up. And I am gathering yes, as um, you all have been showing up daily here. So that is incredible intention. things um, open up uh, for your day, open up for your week and how you are showing up. Because um, everything we do brings us back to a place of how we individually get to show up as leaders. And it really is that space of knowing that leadership is truly a function of how you choose to show up, how you choose to serve others, and how you choose to take that personal responsibility inside those spaces. And so, oh, you can hear Peyton in the background. Yes, he's a little feisty this morning. He kept his mama up a little bit last night he was not feeling so well and so now he must be feeling fine because he has just been tearing up his toys and uh, squeaking and so I think he wants to play a little bit but that's all right he'll get some playtime later right now it's all about you guys and it's all about setting our mindset on the right path this morning so that we can have our most amazing week yet and when we talk about mindset we need to get in the conversation around how we feel about money as well and it is one of the things I'm going to dig into deep with you is the deep-seated beliefs and things that we hold. Good morning, Michelle, around money and our beliefs. Um, a lot of our fear and anxiety and beliefs around money are impacting everything else in our life. And so it was interesting to me, not even that long ago, where I really understood the connection between health, wealth, and your relationships. And that if anything is not feeling settled in any one of those spaces, and it could be relationship to yourself, relationship to your job, relationship to your passion, purpose, whatever you're doing, relationship to another person, 
um, your health in terms of your mindset, your spirituality, your emotionality. Um, your health is not just your physical sense. It's all of the components. So it's your, your physical, your mental, your spiritual, your sexual, your financial, your emotional, your um, all of those pieces play into your health. And then your wealth, um, which is more than just your money. It also plays into those spaces of prosperity and abundance. And do you have your tank full when it comes to uh, health in your life? And so when I really recognize, good morning, Mateo, um, recognize that there's incredible power and link between your health, wealth, and mindset, um, or health, wealth, and um, physical, uh, your relationships, those kinds of things. So when you think about wealth, health, and relationships are all interwoven and connected, that if something is not showing up the way you want in those spaces, there is something getting in your way in terms of a belief, a barrier, a mindset. And so one of the things I want to bring to your attention, and for those of you that don't know, I've uh, done a lot of martial arts in my lifetime. I um, am a boxer. Uh, I did MMA for a while. I've done things like Muay, uh, Muay Thai, um, Tai Chi, um, I've done uh, kickboxing, boxing, uh, some different things along those disciplines. And what's always fascinating to me is, and, and most people, especially people that are not familiar with martial arts, they always think about um, how martial arts is this fighting technique when actually it's just the opposite. It's a mindset technique, truthfully. Um, most martial arts is centered around your breath, and most mar martial arts is centered around your breathing. And so what I wanna do is I wanna bring in some principles today that can be really helpful in terms of how to set your mindset and how to release some of that fear and anxiety. And like I said, we're gonna get into more of the actual money stuff as we go along, but what I wanna introduce you to is this concept of making yourself empty. And so what do I mean by that? What happens is most people think that fighting is all about force, right? It's about however you come in and how you're gonna like resist back, you're gonna push back, you're gonna hit back. When real power comes from a place of being empty. It comes from a place of being able to counteract the resistance that's coming to you. And this is the same technique I want you to think about for the resistance that's in your mind, the resistance that you're holding on to. Because here's the thing, nothing has meaning, nothing thing has meaning until you choose to connect to it, you choose to emotionally engage with it, and you choose to give it meaning. Everything is simply a data point. There is nothing in this world that has meaning until you choose there's that word again, you choose to give it meaning. And so if you're feeling offended by somebody, if you're feeling triggered by something, if you're feeling like you're in a space where um, something's being done to you, Know that you giving it meaning based on something that you're emotionally connecting to. And what happens is oftentimes we want to push that. We've done a lot. We've spoken a lot about that push, that resistance, that, that fight, right? And so we have this tendency to want to punch it in its face or retaliate. We, we, we go in. So being empty is not about shrinking down and getting small. Being empty is not about retaliating and saying, I'm not going to stand in my power. Standing in your power says, I'm absolutely going to hold this space and I'm not gonna put any more resistance into the equation. And so I want you to think about the concepts around Tai Chi, for example. Tai Chi is this space where, and I'm gonna read you, I'm gonna go through a couple things, so I took some notes as I wanted to kind of prep for this morning. And so Tai Chi masters, they empty so that they can be filled with power. So what does that actually mean? It's kind of the yin-yang dance, right, between extreme opposites. So where there's light, there must be darkness. Where there's right, there must be wrong. Where there's up, there must be down. The law, the universal laws demand that there is a law of opposites in everything. And so it's how we can compare. It's how we can qualify. It's how we can make decisions about things is because there's this yin-yang dance between them that says, okay, if this is force, then there needs to be something opposite of that. And more force is not opposite to force. True power is actually opposite of force and that resting space. And I know we talked about this last week in a couple things, that the magic happens when you slow down and allow yourself to be still. It's not in the wind and grind. It's not in the burn and churn. It's not the over and over and over again trying to fight and push that boulder uphill. It's when you allow yourself to breathe and receive and allow yourself to be still. And so when you get in that space where you recognize that 
you have an opportunity to quiet yourself down. It goes back to that breathing exercise I showed you last week. Remember when we talked about the two sides of the empty? For those of you that weren't with us, we did some box breathing. That's a Navy SEAL technique that they use so that they can really get their core engaged. Um, which, by the way, all your power comes from within your core. It's this whole center that's like from up here by your sternum all the way down behind your hamstrings. That's your core. It's the essence. It's where your center of gravity is. Um, and when you are taking care of that and you are, you're filling that and you are, you are working and honing that muscle, you start to be able to stand in your power more because we start to breathe from a more visceral space. We start to breathe from something that is where our power is residing. And so as you think about this idea of the empty, right? So last week I taught you a technique around the box breathing. And we started with a four by four by four by four, if you remember. And it was to inhale slowly for a count of four so that you could feel the oxygen fill every cell of your body. You could feel the abundance. You could feel the cleansing. And you're actually awakening every cell because you're letting the oxygen move through your body, right? We, we have so much of that shallow breathing that's happening. When you take those, those deliberate breaths in on a, on a specific count, you start to fill your whole body. Then what we did is we held that breath. We didn't release it. We held that breath. And then what we did is, as if you were breathing through a straw, I asked you to breathe that breath out as slower, slower on the return, right? Good morning, Jeff. And so we did this exercise around box breathing. The space that I told you where the magic happens. So if you're going to take an intake of four or whatever, and I, I can actually do a 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 at this point. But for those of you just starting, I want you to inhale for four, hold for four, release for four, and here's where the magic happens. It's in the empty space. It's in the space where you don't, actually you're not taking breath in and you're not releasing breath out. It's the space where you hold yourself as an empty vessel. And if you look at anything around martial arts, it's one of the things that they really teach you is how to go and be empty because it's not in the force of resistance in terms of fighting back, pushing back, breathing into it, giving all that energy. It's when you go soft and it's when you go empty that you have the most power. And so if you think about Tai Chi masters, they empty so that they can fill, be filled with power. Think about that for a minute. They empty so that they can fill themselves up with their own power. Because most of the time, the most significant technique, the most significant hit, the most significant punch doesn't come from force. It comes from a place of either counteracting somebody else's and letting them kind of um, take their own hit because they're exhausting themselves because they're all in a force mode and you're just like, okay, go at it, dude. Or you're coming from a place where you've allowed yourself to empty so much that it's just pure power when you come back. And so I want you to think about this idea because they don't fight with power, they fight with emptiness. Or I should say they respond because they don't actually fight. They respond and counteract with emptiness. And so I want you to think about, good morning, good morning, oh, great, I get some uh, extra props from my man, uh, Jeff Josso, who is literally the man that trains this space. If you ever wanted to know anybody that could talk about martial arts and all the, the, the concepts and whatever, he is absolutely, he is actually someone I got to train with. And uh, so excited to see you on this morning. Uh, it just makes my heart sing. Um, I do miss our sparring days. Although, let me tell you, Jeff is like six foot, I don't know, what are you, Jeff? Six five? I'm like five too so our sparring got to be very interesting but man he taught me so much uh, back when we used to spar together and when we used to play in that space together and it's amazing how much um, especially me somebody that was always in this push space how much you learn when you get into a space of martial arts that it's all about the softness and the release it's about stand, being in your power and being wide open and empty and so I want you to think about the Tai Chi masters Good morning, Terry. Good morning. Always oh, laughing. That's awesome. Um, the master filled with so much power and force that he has no use, no need to use it. Oftentimes, it's the counteractive moves, right? So I want you to think about this. The reason that I'm sharing this with you is because the same concepts apply to our monkey mind. The same concepts apply to the resistance and the fight that keeps showing up with us every day when we're like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm not enough. Oh, I'm not whatever. And whatever's triggering and firing up for you, all that is is fight and resistance that's showing up and so your opportunity is not to try to punch it in the face which is what most of us do especially if you're like me a type a personality the opportunity is to allow yourself to relax into it and allow yourself to go empty and it's in the emptiness that when you 
you are allowed to have, you have the greatest power. And so I want you to think about this idea of empty versus fight. Here's the concepts I want you to kind of embrace around this. When doubt shows up, match it with understanding. When fear shows up, match it with compassion. When sabotage, your own personal self-sabotage starts to show up, match it with empowerment. And so when you try to find the yin and yang of everything, because everything, law, law of opposites demands that everything has an equal opposite. Nothing, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Everything has an equal um, opposite out there. So when you think about if something is coming as fear, match it with the same level of compassion. And what happens is that allows you to be in an empty space where your power is being generated instead of this fight that keeps going where you're just like, okay, let me take another punch, let me take another punch, and I'm going to see how many times I can swing. I assure you that if all you're doing is swinging all the time, you're going to get exhausted. Most, not even most, all really awesome fighters watch their swing count compared to their opponents. And I mean this, if you ever watch a fight, typically their swing count is significantly less than that of their opponents because they're smart about how to stand in their power and they know when to take the right swing versus just swing it for all their might you will exhaust yourself which is what most people do we are swinging all the time at the resistance and the fear or like i said we're retaliating and so it's also not to put yourself in that fetal position or retaliate and say i don't want to deal with that that's a cop out and remember, I've talked about when we have those triggers show up, there's one of three choices you have. The first choice is you can say, I don't want to do that. I just want it to go away. And you retreat and you retaliate and you cop out. When you say, I don't want to deal with a trigger, a resistance or something showing up, know that you are creating your, a space of victim mentality and you are allowing the trigger to win. You are copping out and you're putting yourself in that fetal position and retaliating versus the second space, which is really where the power is, is allowing yourself to go empty and curious to say, I wonder where that trigger's coming from. What does that actually mean for me? What's connected to it? How does that show up? And what, what can I put in place? What can I match it with? If there's this fear, where's the compassion that I can have with it? The forgiveness, the whatever might be needed in that space, the love. And then the third space is once you've kind of moved through those two cycles, you get into a space where you're like, yeah, I'm really good. You know what? I know who I am. I'm really clear. And this is when you're really dropping in and sit standing in that power. I know who I am. Therefore, this doesn't even affect me anymore. I recognize that that used to be my trigger, but now I've got such a conviction and commitment to who I am and allowing myself to empty anytime that shows up that that's not even a trigger anymore and it's kind of like the water off the duck's back. And so I want you to think about that. What can you match that resistance with? Because more resistance is not the match for resistance. When that fight shows up, more fight is not going to work. And so for some of you, um, you know I like to talk about my character Fred, right? And I call it Fred because back in the day where we actually used to write notes in school, not text and other things, uh, one of my friends used to sign her notes, you know, those handwritten notes that we folded up and passed in class. Yes, I'm dating myself. Um, but she would always say, love you, Fred. And she would create this little character that had these big eyes and goofy feet. And it looked like a little, uh, one of those um, squish balls, right? Those little stress balls, those uh, things that are like the, the little hairs all over the place and whatever, and you just squish it. So I always was like, Fred was kind of my, I don't know, just little character that just connected. And I remember I was having a huge fight with some resistance. I mean, fight with resistance, all on knockout, drag out, brawl. And I was working with one of my coaches and he said, well, no wonder why you keep having money issues. You keep wanting to punch it in the face. And I'm like, I know I want to punch it in the face. I don't know why it keeps showing up. I keep doing the work around it and it keeps showing up and I just am sick of it and I don't understand it. And he said, Every moment that you have that resistance, you're calling more of that fight to you. And so when you think about, when it started to occur to me, I was like, oh, he goes, so think about it for a minute. How would you deal with somebody else in that fight mode? What's going to happen if you fight back? I'm like, we're just going to fight longer, more, and we're both going to get exhausted. So it became really clear to me. And I, I, I had this like epiphany one day, and it was all around thinking about what, how you would deal with a petulant child, for example. So say you're around a kid, right? And I would imagine all of you in some way, shape, or form, whether you have children or not, you've been around young children, especially a child throwing a temper tantrum. 
And what's interesting is what is likely, and I would love for you guys to weigh a little bit as I get a little sip of coffee here and take a breath. <laughs> I'm on fire this morning. Um, I want I want to ask you, what's the least effective way for you to calm a child down when they're in the middle of a full-on temper tantrum? What is the least effective way, which is what most people default to initially? When your child is throwing in a temper tantrum, what's the least effective way you're going to get them to stop? I'd love for some of you to weigh in before I go on as I take some coffee. <laughs> what's the least effective way? Okay, well, some of you are waking up this Monday morning. The least effective way is typically when you scream or when you match that energy tit for tat, right? When they're all like screaming and yelling and throwing shit off the shelves in the grocery store, the worst, yeah, yell at them, right? Thanks, Jeff. Um, the worst way to try to get a child to stop throwing a temper tantrum is when you essentially throw a temper tantrum back. When you start to match their and model their behavior, instead of what's the opposite, if they're wound up, what's the opposite of what they need? Pay a lot of attention to that child. Yes, or sidekick. <laughs> or sidekick that child, that's awesome. Um, yes, you could do that. I'm probably not effective either, right? Um, but yes, when you pay too much attention to them throwing the temper tantrum, that's also a not effective way because you're participating at that level of energy. You're in that vibration with them where you are in that resistance and you're just antagonizing it even more. The most effective way that you can quiet a child down is, yes, the calm, is the empty. It's when you drop into yourself, you drop your tone, and you say, you know, I want to know what's wrong, but I can't hear you until you use your words. When you're ready to tell me what's wrong, I will be over here and I'm ready to listen. And when they're like, ah, you're like, I still can't hear you until you use your words. And what's interesting is if you invite them over to the table and you talk to them, there's usually a handful of reasons why a child is throwing a temper tantrum, right? So what are some of them? What are some of the reasons that I will say children, but even people, grown-ass people, um, throw temper tantrums? What are some of those reasons typically? And there's, there's a handful. There's usually a few reasons why kids throw temper tantrums. What's one of them? Yeah, she must de-escalate de calmly. Yes, I like that phrase, de-escalate calmly. I might have to borrow that one. Love that, Martha. So what is one reason a child throws a temper tantrum? Frustration. So there's one. Absolutely. Absolutely, kids throw temper tantrums because they're frustrated. Either they're not feeling like they're hurt, like they can't find their words. Let's see, lack of attention. Unmet expectations not getting what they want. Yes. How about they're hungry? They're tired. Hmm. Do any of those things right there, those, what are they, like seven things I just put up? I don't know. My fingers are doing all kinds of funky things. Um, do any of those things ever cause us to get irritable and throw temper tantrums as adult? Frustration, <laughs> lack of attention, unmet expectations, not getting what we want, not feeling like we are heard, seen, or valued. When we're hungry, everybody, anybody ever gotten hangry before? When we're tired, when we're running around over and over again and we haven't had a chance to play. So could any of those reasons be things, yes, tired? Could there be any of those reasons that are also reasons why we get wound up? reasons why we throw our adult version and sometimes not so adult version of a temper tantrum. So what do we typically do? We get more frustrated with ourselves. We're like, Rawr, right? And we just start punching ourselves in the face and we're screaming at ourselves and we're like, knock it off, suck it up, do this, do that, right? And what we don't realize is our inner child is in that space of a temper tantrum. Our ego is firing up and the inner child in us is throwing a temper tantrum, and we as the adult are playing in that space with them. Instead of when that tantrum or when that energy shows up, saying to ourselves, and I call my inner little child Fred. I know I'm a woman, but Fred, just because I see that little character, I'm like, all right, Fred, what's going on? Because when I imagine a child, 
I imagine my dog, or I imagine some little furry Muppet character, the idea of screaming back at them, the idea of wanting to beat them down doesn't really appeal to me. In fact, it breaks my heart. And so I then am like, why would I do that to myself? And so if the best way to diffuse um, or de-escalate, as Martha said, the tantrum is to get into a space of calm and empty and counteract the fear with compassion, wouldn't it be more effective if we started to do that for ourselves? And so when I talk about getting into temper tantrum or anger turn into depression, that's that shutdown space, right? Because that's the other way kids throw temper tantrums. They just sulk, they go in and they are like, I don't want to talk to you. And they pout. And that's exactly what we do. We get into that space that allows us to depress ourselves into a space where it's all about us. And what happens is, is when we get so internalized in that space, we're in this constant fight. We are constantly creating that energy that is just bam, 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 bam. And it's exhausting us instead of allowing ourselves to go empty and breathe into the space to cleanse it out and allow ourselves to be in our power to say, okay, you know what? I feel all this showing up. Now's my choice to drop into a space of whatever's going to match that. And if it's fear showing up, I get to match that with love and compassion. And when we do that, when we start to treat ourselves that way, when we start to create a space where we acknowledge and we take responsibility for that, and we show up from a forgiving, loving, grateful space, we then allow ourselves to diffuse that energy that starts to kind of perpetuate and move into these cycles and, and spirals and things like that. And so I want you to realize is your internal power is stored as potential energy. And so when you drop into your power, when you empty and allow yourself to feel into yourself, um, the opportunity is that you're no longer fighting back, pushing back, hitting back, you're allowing yourself to be empty and keep moving. And so I want you to really feel about the fact that, you know, and some people will say, how do I find my path, right? Because here's one of those resistance points that's been showing up for some of you. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my mission is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in this life. And the problem is right now you're giving it all this resistance. What I want you to do is I want you to open and empty yourself. I want you to just empty yourself. I want you to be in a space to receive. I want you to be in a space to drop into deep compassion. I want you in a space where you can open yourself. And then I want you to start listening to your intuition. Your intuition is telling you it's the things that light you up. It's the things that give you joy. It's the things that you are having immense gratitude for. It's the things that make you want to dance when they are you know, occurring or, or, or happening. And then I want you to sit still and feel into where your mind, heart, and soul wander. Now, first, you got to allow yourself to calm. you got to allow yourself to breathe and allow yourself to be open and empty just to receive. Just allow yourself to be empty. Again, practice those breaths if you need to and think about how it feels to be in that space with no breath. Just empty. And then what I want you to do is I want you to sit and feel into where your mind, where your heart, where your soul wanders and then think about where you keep going or where you keep returning to in that process. And for those of you that are really struggling with what's the meaning of your life, what's your purpose, if you allow yourself to empty like that, that will start to come to you naturally and that will start to really show up and make sense for you. I also, as any of that resistance shows up, encourage you to create your own Fred or your own character. And by the way, that works really well with kids. I had a client of mine who had a 10 year old who was really struggling to articulate their emotions. And we talked about this. Oftentimes when we say, I feel something, we say something like, I feel pissed because that's the socially accepted feeling instead of saying, I feel scared. I feel like I, you didn't pay attention to me. I feel like I got run over. I feel like you didn't value me. I feel small. When we own the real emotion is where the magic and the, the healing happen. And so sometimes, even as adults, we need a way to say what I'm feeling. And so I had a client where they were huge Sesame Street fans. No wonder why they're my client. I love Sesame Street and the Muppets and Disney and y'all know that. Um, but they ended up naming different fears, different characters in Sesame Street. So Elmo was one character, Oscar was one, Grover, Bert, and Ernie. And so when they, their child was having a hard time expressing themselves, 
um, he would say, I'm feeling like Oscar showing up today. And Oscar was anger. If you've ever seen Oscar on Sesame Street, Oscar's always grouchy and angry and just mad at the world. And so they would use those as safe language to help their kids lean into what they were really feeling. And that's where allowing yourself to be empty, it allows you to be creative, it allows you to let go of the need. And as somebody who has been fighting most of my life, let me tell you, I was exhausted. And it wasn't until I learned, and actually it's one of the best things that martial arts ever did for me, was teach me that the first, and first rule of, of any martial arts is that fighting is always your last option. Fighting is your last option. There's always a different way you want to come at things before fight has to be the thing that you tap into. Um, and that's usually when you truly have to defend yourself. Um, otherwise, there's, it's, like I said, it's more about your core. It's more about your energy. It's more about your breathing. And for those of you that you know don't think, and I always tell people when they ask me if I do yoga, I'm like, boxing is actually more my yoga. I do yoga more for stretching and other things. But because breath work is so important in any kind of training in that capacity, in fact, most people don't realize that Pilates was a derivative of boxing. Joseph Pilates, who actually was a boxer and then boxing coach, created Pilates so that he could get his fighters to actually learn how to engage their core in a much deeper capacity. And like I said, when you think about your core, really starting from right here about the middle of your chest through the back of your hamstrings, um, the way you engage your body is very different. And so really love the fact that, I mean, Joseph Pilates said, my, my fighters are getting too exhausted. They're not dropping into their power. They're not using their core. They're fighting too much, and it's too much of that physical resistance and that, that brawn versus being a controlled space of their power. And so he actually created Pilates, um, just a little trivia fact for all of you, created Pilates to help train his boxers so that they would learn how to breathe better and learn how to tap into their core. And it's one of the reasons why I keep teaching you so many different breath exercises and we're gonna do some Qigong and some other things because your core, engaging your core to stand in your power will help you release that need to wanna to fight all the time. When you're doing the shallow breathing that very anxious when you're doing the just reactionary you know space and, and vibration that you're playing in you're going to find yourself in fight more than allowing yourself to go empty and breathe into a space that's actually going to let you drop into your real power and that potential energy that you're storing so questions about that that was kind of a, another big concept i put out there thoughts about letting yourself go empty allowing yourself and practicing that space to be really mindful of you know if something's showing up what's the what's going to match that versus putting any more energy into the fight because what i want you to do is i want you to release the fight i want you to release the need to push back hit back fight back and I want you to be able to drop into a space where you allow yourself to go soft. And Bruce Lee, another great uh, fighter, would say things like, be like water, my friend, which means soft and fluid, which means soft and bendable, which means able to stay open. Because anytime you get in that tight space where you're stuck, you start to get that toxic energy. Because just like water, if water sits for too long in a container, it will eventually get stagnant and toxic which is why it needs to be in constant motion, which is why it needs to be soft and bendable and malleable and have that empty space because the magic happens inside that empty. So questions, thoughts about that for a Monday morning to get you guys all fired up and get you on the right track to go kick some ass today in a good way. I don't mean kick ass like fight. I mean kick ass like show up and be awesome. Um, thoughts or questions before we wrap things up for today? love that all of you are on here this morning give you just a minute I know there's a delay sometimes so I try to slow it down here and there so that you guys can uh, weigh in because I do want to hear from you and I want to make sure that these messages are resonating for you as well anything anything all right well, all right then I am going to, let's see, somebody just waited. A uh, recommendation for you and all of your friends. Excellent. Jeff, I love that you're on here this morning. Um, anything else from you guys? The Book of Five Rings. Oh, that's just recommendation for us. I am definitely going to, I love books, so I am going to look that one up. The Book of Five Rings as soon as I find my little note thing here so I can write that down. 
the Book of Five Rings. The book. And just side note, Jeff, I do miss sparring with you, my friend. I miss our days of training together for sure. And I know you're crushing it down in your 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 little piece of the world. So I love that. I love watching what you're doing. Um, all right. So for the rest of you, I do go check that book out and find ways. Allow yourself. And by the way, if you are not carving out that intentional time, not carving out that space to allow yourself to be with you, be still, you will never learn how to be empty. And so if you're not meditating, if you're not journaling, if you're not doing your morning routine and having that discipline and being intentional, if you're not walking in nature, if you're not just sitting and letting yourself daydream, if you don't give yourself that time every day, your ability to go empty is going to be diminished um, rapidly. And so it is a muscle that needs to be practiced. It is a muscle that needs to be honed. We don't naturally, because of the way we've been taught in our culture, don't know how to sit in that space. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Um, I want you to really be mindful about the more time you create for yourself, the more powerfully and intentionally you can show up in the world. It's not about doing more. It's actually about doing less and doing things that are more impactful and more meaningful to you. And the only way you're going to know that is to allow yourself to go soft, be still, and get empty to tap into what really sets your heart, your soul, your mind, your whole being on fire. And so I hope all of you will take some time. Heart to heart hugs all the way around. Yes! Heart to heart hugs to all of you. I love you. Uh, tomorrow we're getting into another training segment, 7.30. Um, in addition, for those of you that want a little bit more dose, of me and some of my great um, colleagues that I love to engage in conversation with. Be sure to check out the Powerhouse podcast on iTunes or YouTube. Uh, there is an episode a week that is launched um, and just some great, amazing things. Right now we are featuring and highlighting uh, Terry Rundell, who's been part of our morning uh, conversation. So go check it out. It's an amazing conversation. Um, and again, for anyone that is looking to really dig into this work um, at, a, at a just deep level. Um, I do have a three-day event coming up here in two weeks. Crazy, I know. But May 1st through 3rd, if you want, um, let me know. I can send some information on that too. Otherwise, go out there and have a magical Monday. Um, really be intentional about how you're showing up for yourself because how you show up for yourself starts the whole process around how you can show up for everybody else. And so with that, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.